Jesus. Look at somebody and say, I'm glad to be here. Look at somebody else and say, I'm glad to be here. Is there anybody still expecting God to do something incredible on your behalf? Are we still excited about our youth this morning? Are we still excited about our youth? I want to present to some and introduce to others. Please help me welcome our youth pastor, Troy Cotton Jr. Let's receive him at this time. Come on, somebody give God some praise. Come on, if you're really excited, give God some praise. Come on, if you really got a praise on the inside, I dare you show it up on the outside and give God some praise. Amen, amen. I'm going to get right into the word because I know we got some old country buffet saints that want to get straight to get something to eat. First of all, give honor to God who's ahead of my life, to his son, Jesus Christ, who came and suffered and died. We all have the right to the tree of life. To the founders of this house, Apostle Elvis John Locke, Prophet Naomi Locke, to the greatest pastor in the world, our pastor. Come on, let's give it up for our pastor, Pastor Marlon Locke. And the greatest first lady, Lady Kimberly Locke, thank you so much. To the elders of the church, let's give it up for the elders. Welcome back, elder. To all the ministers, let's give it up for all the ministers, all the servants, parking lot crew, young soldiers, deacons, ushers. Let's give it up for all the servants in the house. And I want to give it up for the greatest woman in my life, my wife, Cortina Cotton. Can we give it up for my wife? To my two beautiful daughters, Taylor and Jordan, and we have one in the oven. I don't know what that is yet, so I don't want to announce that yet, but if it's a boy, I'm going to shout around the whole church. I have a special guest in the house. Um, when I went to college, um, I kind of didn't know where my life was going to go, right? Because I was coming from Milwaukee, went to Green Bay, didn't know nobody, uh, was on a basketball scholarship, but uh, somebody took me in as a brother um, and really showed me the ropes and had a real contribution of me becoming a man. Uh, give it up for my best friend, Cordero Barkley from uh, Green Bay and his wife, Aaron. Can we give it up for them? Come on, we could do better than that. Can we give it up for my special guest? Love y'all. Love y'all. Really, really do. Appreciate what y'all done for me. Um, let's get right into the word. Uh, let's go to Psalms chapter 37, verse number 1 and 2 in the New Living Translation. We put that on the screen. We're going to get right into it. All right, they don't have it yet. So let me read. It says, don't worry about the wicked. Or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. May God add a blessing to the reading and most of all the obedience of his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come as humble as you know how. Just say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning and start us on our way. Thank you for closing us in our right mind. Thank you for keeping us safe and warm. Father God, thank you for being God all by yourself. Father God, I don't have the words for your people. So, Father God, I need you to speak through me. I sit down as you stand up. I be quiet as you speak. I stop talking as you speak the words through me. Father God, thank you for being a rock in the weary land. Thank you for being a shelter in a time of storm. Thank you for being a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Father God, thank you for your healing power on this morning. Father God, as I speak, Father God, I know that healing will come forth on this morning. Father God, somebody is here saying, what must I do to be saved? Once you are done speaking to them, Father God, millions and thousands, Father God, will come running to your altar saying, what must I do to be saved? And we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise that's due in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may take your seats. You may take your seats. Now, the theme on this Youth Sunday is we win. How many winners we got in the house on this morning? Okay, I'm not convinced at all. How many winners 
we have in the house on this morning. I hope you realize that because you woke up this morning, you already defeated death. Somebody give God praise right there. You are a winner. When you woke up this morning, you defeated death last night. I dare somebody give God praise. Say, I'm a winner. I'm going to use on a, for a thought on this morning. A bad win is better than a good loss. A bad win is better than a good loss. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I hope you washed your hands. And if you need a mint, I got you. But I need a partner on this morning because I can't win without a partner. This is not golf. I need a partner on this morning. Because look at your neighbor again and say, neighbor, you sure look like your daddy. Matter of fact, I heard a lot about you from him. He said that you are a lender and not the borrower. That you are the head and not the tail. That you are above and not beneath. That you are a winner and not a loser. Tell him, welcome to the team. I, I ain't come to play with the devil this morning because I feel like he's been trying to defeat me all week long. But I serve notice on the devil. I never lose. I always win. I am a child of God. Devil, you nothing but a liar, a cheater, a deceiver, heartbreaker. I won't let you back in my life. So I'm taking the house, the car, the keys, and the dog. Tell your neighbor I want it all. If you're looking for that, that's found in St. Profile, chapter 10, verse number 21, and the Keep It Real translation, if you're looking for that in your Bible. I didn't come to play with the devil this morning because he tried to defeat my wife, he tried to defeat my kids, he tried to defeat my dad, he tried to defeat our family with death, he tried to put sickness over my grandmama, but I served notice on this morning, I win! I'm still standing. I'm still standing. So let me get you a little bit background about this subject. I went overseas back in 2011. And when I went overseas, I had to take a 16-hour plane ride over to Istanbul, Turkey. Then I had to take another two-hour flight over to the country called Georgia. Say Georgia. I'm not talking about Atlanta. I'm talking about the country of Georgia. Before I got there, two years before, prior to when I got there, they had war with Russia. And they fought for their own country. So now, Georgia became their own country. So when I got there, I'm thinking I'm in Russia. They said, no, you are Georgian. I said, I have no idea what that is. They told me I was coming to Russia. So as soon as we get there, we go right to Georgia. We go to a party, things like that. They had a, a media there for me. And two days later, I had a basketball game. And I played horrible. I played horrible. I'm talking about I only scored about four points. So the media are like, man, this guy, he's American. What, what, what's going on? So I come to the locker room, and I'm depressed, and I'm like, man, I got to do better. And I had my cousin Ruben with me at the time. He stayed with me for about a week over there. He said, don't worry about it, big bro. A bad win is better than a good loss. He said, did y'all win the game? I said, absolutely. He said, well, that's all that matters. See, bad and win has nothing to do with results. Bad and win has every do, everything to do with senses. See, I'd rather look bad and win than look good and lose. Y'all not, not hearing me on this morning. See, we have to change our mindset. See, as long as I win at the end, I don't care how I look to you. I could care less. You could talk about what car I drive. You can talk about what house I live in. You can talk about I live in Menominee Falls. Well, I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I'm fine with that as long as I win. Somebody shout, I win. If you're not careful, you would look at the bad and win as a result instead of looking at, instead of looking at win and losses as the result. God do not care about your senses when he already concluded the results. I'd rather look bad to people and look good to God. Don't make the mistake and look at the cover, but never consider reading the book. 
because inside is way better than the outside. Matter of fact, the Bible says that your latter should be better than your former. I, I need my basketball players with me on this one. Have you ever went to the park and you saw the guy with the whole outfit on? I'm talking about he got the uh, Steph Curry shorts, jersey, headband, sleeve, uh, socks, drawers. I bet you, you would never pick him on your team. I need somebody dirty on my team. I need that guy that got a beater on, that got shorts, that got a rip in it. They got one sock that's uh, look different than the other. They got two different shoes on. I'd rather pick him. We had, a, we had a generation now that we got too many pretty names. I need names like Dirty Dave, Big Dookie. I need somebody like that. I don't need no pretty Ricky on my team. I need somebody. Matter of fact, if I go to the Bible for a second, all his disciples was gangsters. I don't got time for no pretty people on my team. If I'm going to win, I'm going to win somebody that had battle scars. I don't need nobody that's coming here with a suit on talking about I got next. No, you do not. You ain't going to be on my team. Matter of fact, I think my ankle hurt. I'll wait for the next game. You got to know who's on your team. Are you praying with me? Even in the Bible, David was anointed when he was dirty. Y'all ain't catching what I'm saying. We don't got no Bible readers in the house. So you got to understand, David was called into the house from the field. He didn't go get dressed. He didn't go get his nails done. He didn't go get his hair clipped. He came in the house and said, I'm David. He said, well, you are the king. Stop trying to get dressed for your anointing. God will pick you in your occupation. Since I'm here at this place, let me tell you something. Jesus always picked people from their occupation. Even Jesus was hung on something he could have made. Okay, okay, let me, let me break it down for you. Jesus was a carpenter, so that means he was hung on wood or something he could have made himself. If you really want to find your purpose, look at your occupation. Okay, let me move on. I ain't that deep. I, I ain't that deep. So, on this Christian journey, you will learn how to count. Somebody say count. Sometimes we sum up things too early in this journey. In James chapter 1, verse number 2 and 3, I need you to see this. James chapter 1, verse number 2 and 3, if they put it on the screen. Man, they still ain't rocking with me. That's cool. They ain't even right. They do got youth pastor up there, though. That's real nice. That's real nice. Okay. Okay, I, I'll read it myself. So, in, in the Bible, it says that, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trine of your faith work it patience. Somebody say, count it all joy. You don't score when everything is going well. You score when you have a challenger. You cannot score unless you're going against somebody. So why are you complaining about your enemy? Okay. In any game, you have to have somebody going against you in order to score. So since we win at the end, the Bible says count it all joy. So that means you got to count your whole journey up to this point. Stop looking at one situation and say, well, I think I'm losing. That's just the first quarter. You got to wait till the end of the game. The Bible says count it all joy. Somebody say all joy. We get in trouble when we stop counting, think it seems that we're too far behind. We have to learn to count it all joy in order to win. It's sometimes, and, and it says in the Bible also that when you fall into diverse temptation, not if, but when you fall. Somebody say, I fail, but I am going to get up. Even Jesus was tempted. to. So why do you think at any given moment that you won't be tempted like Jesus was? Why are you afraid of temptation? Temptation. But he says, with the temptation, he gives you a way to escape. So I need somebody, I need everybody on this morning to realize, stop taking the elevator and take the stairs. Stop taking the easy way out. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13, the Bible says that there is no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. Somebody say faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, will with the temptation also make a way to escape 
how can you escape the elevator if the elevator man is on break, the fire department is 30 minutes away, but if you take the stairs, it's a narrow path. And I believe in the Bible, the Bible says you got to go on straight street. See, on, in the stairs, you get tired going up than you're going down. Since we're going up on this thing, I'd rather take the stairs than take the elevator. I can't control who go on the elevator with me, but I sure could take the stairs and get off on any floor if I ever get in trouble. Somebody say, take the stairs. We got to stop trying to take the easy way out. See, the stairs build muscle when you take the stairs. It builds endurance when you take the stairs. You lose weight of sin if you take the stairs. You cross paths with your blessing when you take the stairs. You on straight street when you take the stairs. You cannot be skipped when you take the stairs. Somebody yell out, take the stairs. stairs. When winning, when you're in a winning situation, I need you to hear me because you're sitting by somebody that just might be a hater. So look at him and say, you ain't no hater, are you? You do want me to win, right? You ain't going to tell the coach not to put me in when it's time to win. You ain't no hater. So when winning, look out for the ones who always talk about what they contribute to your win. What they did, what they sacrificed, how they played a major role in your success. Make sure you look out for those ones. They want to put on Facebook, yeah, you wouldn't be in that position if it wasn't for me. I told you about the job. Oh, y'all don't got them people in your life? Y'all don't got them people in your life? Let me tell you something. That a true winner don't try to get better when they lose. That's not a true winner. They try to get better when they didn't like the way they won. See, see, you got to understand, CB contested this. See, when we ain't win, when we played a scrubby team, you know how you play a scrubby team and they, they have no business being in the game. We win, but uh, we, we should have been blew them out. Well, Coach would call practice that same night. Yeah, we get in the gym. I didn't like the way we won. We won. I didn't like the way we won. Y'all got to stop being so, so content with just winning, but you got you to gotta really defeat the enemy. See, David wasn't just, he, he, how can I put this? He wasn't satisfied with just knocking down Goliath. See, his weapon knocked down Goliath, but he used Goliath's weapon to kill him. See, the slingshot didn't kill Goliath. The slingshot just knocked him down. But then he took Goliath's sword and cut his head off. Tell somebody, I used the enemy's weapon. To defeat him. In order to win, you have to drop that ability to live life a little in order to live life more abundantly. See, when I, I, I talk about myself, when I was in college and high school, I always told my parents, yeah, man, I'm trying to live life a little. You know what I'm saying? I get saved when I'm about 28, you know what I'm saying, 29. When I settle down a little bit, I'll just live life a little. But how can you live something that you don't have? I'll prove it by the Bible. In St. John chapter 10, verse number 10, God said that he would give you life and that more abundantly. How are you trying to live life with something that you don't have? I wasn't living life a little. I was living death. I wasn't living life at all because I didn't have it yet. I was just living, just going on, just trying different things. And then when I came and got life, now I can live life a lot. Somebody give God praise for that. We win, I'm trying to give you different strategies how about, about winning. When we win, we win by coming to God, speaking his language. And sometimes that requires saying nothing at all. I need, you to, I need you to hear me on this one. Matter of fact, the two people that were made whole in the Bible didn't say nothing to Jesus. The two people that was made whole. The two people that was made whole didn't say nothing to Jesus. This got good to me. One pressed her way, and the other was carried from the rooftop, from the rooftop by the Fad Five. Y'all, okay, y'all don't know what the Fad Five is. Y'all, go on YouTube and research Fad Five. They came to God to get healed, but left whole. They came to get healed, but left whole. Now, how is that possible? 
Jesus said that he never saw faith like this because believing in God will get you healed. Having faith in God will make you whole. Faith without works is dead. So work came into play when a woman just pushed everybody out the way, stepped on toes, elbowed people, gave people another reason to ask for healing just for one touch. She didn't talk to Jesus. She didn't come for a testimony. She didn't tell him how long she was suffering. And somehow her faith spoke without her saying a word. The only man that heard her was Jesus. Sometimes you have to have rude faith and push your way to Jesus. Stop coming into God's house trying to talk to everybody besides the man that opened up the door. Why would you? Okay. Okay, I'll talk to this side. None of y'all can come to my house. I open up the door. God bless you. And you just come in my house, talk to my wife, talk to my kids, eat my food, boo-boo in my toilet. You do all these things, but you never come and talk to me. Then you leave my house, and then you call me saying, hey, I need your help. That's how we do God in God's house. Stop coming to God's house and don't talk to him. You come in God's house, talk to everybody else. Hey, this is the week I had. Hey, how you doing? Like those shoes, like your hair. Saw you on Saturday. But then we come and listen to a word. We go back home, see chaos. And then we come and call it on God. And all God said, you had the opportunity. I was here. I was right here. But you talk to everybody else about your problem except for me. I'm that dude. You talk to me. If we come to God's house focused on the agenda of the spirit instead of your own agenda, a lot of people will get made whole. This is not a family reunion. This is not cutting pea barbecue. You ain't here trying to catch up on time. You here to listen from a word from God. If you worship and praise God in his house, He'll take care of your house. Are y'all praying with me? In winning, you have to realize that you have to change the way you seek. See, when I was growing up, I tell on myself, I know y'all played the game too, so y'all ain't going to raise your hand, but we played this game called hide and go get it. Anybody else play hide and go get it? I ain't going to tell y'all the logistics of the game, but so I, listen, hide and go get it. Just, just know, <laughs> don't have your kids play this game. Just, just tell you, when they say, I'm going outside, go play hide, go get it. No, 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 no. You get back in the house. All right, it's not the game that you want your kids to play. So hide and go get it was a game where you want to be found. You really, you, you, you're not hiding. You, 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 you're not <laughs> You're not hiding at all. You are not hiding. You want to be found. <laughs> you just, they said, hi, you. You just, you just, you just standing right around right the side of the tree. You just, I mean, it was obvious, right? But, but we need to play more of hide and seek. Hide and seek. See, let me talk to the single people for a moment. Everybody's looking for the eye candy, but you really need soul food. Okay, all right. So you need to stop looking for the now and laters, because if you get it now or later, you're still going to be hungry. Stop looking for the Skittles, because you're trying to taste the rainbow. Stop looking for the Snickers, because you're hungry while wait. You better wait. Instead, I'd rather get full. I need some soul food. Where my wife at? Hey, soul food. How you doing, baby? I need some soul food in my life. Once I got married, I got my green beans, tomato, tomatoes, lamb, hogs, dog. You name it. Y'all didn't notice I got kind of big over the years. You know what I'm saying? I got my mashed potatoes. You need some things that can stick. We always going for the eye candy. Ooh, she look good. All right. Yeah, all right. Are y'all praying with me? 
If you're going to win, you have to be around people who know who you are when everybody else say different. When I was studying, mm, Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? He asked them a question. Now, Jesus already knew the answer. He already knew the answer. So he said, man, who? First of all, let me talk to y'all for a second. Um, y'all been around me for a while. Y'all saw me do miracles. Who do men say I am? Everybody, they jump up. They say you this. They say you that. They say you this. They say you that. But he said, uh, who you say I am? Who do you say that I am? Who I am to you? Because if you knew who I am, you would tell them when they was wrong. So if somebody come to my dad and tell him something about me that's not true, my dad would correct them right away. They didn't correct the people at all. So that's why Jesus said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Then who do you say I am? Then here come Peter with himself. Say, you are the Christ, son of the living God. So you have to understand that I know what people say about me, but what did, why didn't you correct them? I haven't never announced myself to you, but you're around me all the time. Because when I go through something, I need somebody to know exactly who I am. See, when I was playing basketball, I am a, I am a shooting guard. That's all I did. I didn't, don't ask me to go get no rebound. Don't ask me to dribble. Don't ask me to do nothing. I may take a charge every now and then. depends on the person that's coming to the hole. If they can dunk, I'm moving out the way. I'm not doing all that, but I, I was great at one thing. One, one good thing I was great at, so if you need a three-point shooter, you will put me on your team. On, on this Christmas journey, God needs to know exactly what your gift is so he can put you in the right position to succeed. So you have to evaluate, what is my gift? What do I bring to the table? And that whatever I bring to the table, make sure you talk to somebody that actually have a table. Are y'all praying with me? Even Job's storm gave him the opportunity to find out who was really on his team. His three friends was convinced that he did something wrong, so much so that they spent hours and chapters to get Job to admit his wrong. So Job began to question God and his obedience. Job's like, wait a minute, hold on, y'all, y'all is talking right. What, what's, really, what's really going on, God? Let me talk to you. But then God sent a servant, Elihu, to Job. And Elihu was the youngest of them all in the room. But he came to a point of conversation where the other three friends had no answer for Job's question to God about his suffering. So they're in the room. Job is just going on and on. God, I did this. I did that. What's going on? Did I do something wrong? So all the three friends like, man, well, yeah, what did you do wrong? Come on, let's, let's, let's rewind this thing. What, what did you do, Job? You had to do something wrong. You lost all your kids. You lost everything you had. You going through in your body. You had to do something wrong. What was it? You had to do something wrong. We got to find an answer right away. So here's Elihu, the youngest one in the room. And this is what he said. Let's go to Job. Chapter 32, verse number 6 through 13 in the New Living Translation. I really need this on the screen because I need them to see this. Because this is what the young people nowadays, you got to be bold. You got to be bold. You got to speak up in rooms where they, other people say you don't belong. You got to stop being quiet when you got the truth deep down inside of you. See, this is you Sunday, right? Some, of, some, some elderly people sometimes shut kids up themselves. Don't say nothing. It's grown folks talking. They got something inside of them, and they got the truth. They innocent. Why not have that on your team? So Elihu said, you know what? He said this, I am young, and you are old. I'll read from here. So I held back from telling you what I think. Next, next verse. I thought those who are older should speak, for wisdom comes with age. Next verse. But there is a spirit within people, the breath of the Almighty within them, that makes them intelligent. You thought you, you going to school would make you intelligent. Psych. Next verse. 
Sometimes the elders are not wise. Sometimes the aged do not understand justice. Next verse. So listen to me and let me tell you what I think. Next verse. I have waited all this time listening very careful to your arguments, listening to you grope for words. Next verse. I have listened, but not one of you has refuted Job or answered his arguments. Next verse. And don't tell me he is too wise for us. Only God can convince him. Are y'all praying with me? While I was reading that, there was a very strong message that God sent me. To make a long story short, Eli, who has some questions about for Job, about God's mercy, every time that we are in a situation where we can go either win or lose, we have to remind ourselves what God did in the past. What he did for us in the past. So Elihu said, wait a minute, how you become the richest man in the East in the first place? Let, let, let's rewind past your storm. Are y'all praying with me? Stop just thinking about your storm. Let's go before the storm. Look how God has been good to you. Don't you think he's going to bring you out of this one? You have to change your mentality to get back to a winner's mentality. Are y'all praying with me? Because on this Christian journey, if you're around the wrong friends too long, you'll mess around and forget how to think. And you will ask the wrong people their thoughts. I'll go to the Bible again. We ask everybody, everybody else about their thoughts but God. In Jeremiah 29, verse number 11, it says that he know the thoughts that he thinks towards us. So why are we asking other people their thoughts about our life, talking about what you think? What's your thoughts on this? Did you talk to God yet? He said he know the thoughts that he think towards you. Not My dad don't even know the thoughts that God think towards me. My wife don't know the thoughts that God think towards me. I will ask God before I ask them. Stop asking the wrong people. Ask God. What time we got? Oh, country of faith? Okay, we got some time. So, in the Bible, it talks about that all things work together. All things work together. I told you before, count it all joy. So all things work together for the good. Anybody bake cakes in here? Anybody bake cakes? Raise your hand. You Okay. <laughs> bake cakes. Anybody make cakes? Put it like that. So we have very few. So in Romans chapter 8, verse number 28, it say count it all joy. I mean, I'm sorry. They don't say count it all joy. Forgive me. It says all things work together. For good to them who loves God. I'm reminded of when I tried one time to make a seven up pound cake. Pray, somebody said pray for him. Now, I'm a type of guy where my family haven't seen me cook yet, and it's for a good reason. Uh, I, 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 think, I think I'm the best microwaver in the city of Milwaukee, but if you tell me to put something in the oven, I need instructions. Are y'all praying with me? So my wife asked me a long time ago, what happened to that, um, that pasta that you was bragging about before you got married? I said, oh, that was before we got married. <laughs> I said, <laughs> gotcha. Um, so I tried this seven up cake, and it, 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 didn't, it, it wasn't seven. It, it didn't make it to seven. <laughs> it, it really didn't make it. It was at like five. It didn't make it a seven. But I had looked back at the ingredients, and I said, wait a minute, what did I do wrong? Because you got to remember, every ingredient is so important. Every ingredient. If they tell you to put three sugars, why are you putting two? If you run out of sugar, just go to pick and save and get some more sugar. Don't, don't do what I did. So I looked at all the ingredients, right? And you need one and a half cups of butter. And it got to be soft. You need three cups of sugar. You need five eggs that's room temperature. I put mine in the refrigerator. You need two tablespoons of lemon juice. You need one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You need three cups of all-purpose flour. Somebody say all-purpose. Don't go to save a lot. Try to get their brand. Get all purpose, right, and some 7-Up soda, 
Somebody say seven up. What I realized is that God, you only complete when he used your whole situation. You have to put all of it on the table. Don't leave nothing out. That's when you can be used. That's when you become whole. Let me tell you something. One thing about I love about the woman that pressed her way is she didn't tell nobody how long she suffered. She didn't care. She didn't care who was in the way. She came into the crowd. They said it was a crowd, and she literally pushed everybody out the way. She didn't, she didn't even say, excuse me. She used everything she had left to get to one person. One person. In order to be made whole without saying what she needed. Somebody say, use all you got. So God wants want me to let you know on today that if you keep working on what you was given and put it, all those nasty ingredients into a mix and give it to God so he can put it in the oven, at the end result, you will be satisfied. So let God use the divorce, the abuse relationship, financial burdens, children disobedience, bullying, medical issues, unexpected deaths in your family, depression, mental illness, lack, all those other obstacles, and let him use it so he can put it together and make a beautiful seven-up cake. So to all the parents, do not get down on your youth because they're making mistakes now. Don't give up on them. Do not give up on them. Please don't give up on them. Because God's going to take all of that. Let me tell you something. I want to tell you my testimony real quick. You're looking at a man that told two women when he was in high school to have abortion. You're looking at that man. Because I was so focused on my basketball career, I didn't want no child to be involved. And my parents didn't know until God showed my dad in a dream. And one time we went to TG, was that TGIF? I was, uh, I was what, a sophomore in college? And God showed me. I was going to take that to my grave. I was in Pennsylvania, McDonald's Classic having the best game, playing Mount Vernon, killing them. I get a call right after the game. I'm pregnant. I said, well, that, that, that wasn't something I needed to know at this point, but we're going to figure some stuff out because I, I, I care too much about people. I care too much about people. Then I went on and on in life saying, is God ever going to bless me with a child? Did I make too many mistakes? Was that my only child I was going to have? How can God use me when I told women to have abortion on my behalf so I can go to college? So nobody would know. So I won't be that kid that got to stay after, stay behind. They like, man, yeah, he had a baby, so he can't go far. That's, I went to Green Bay because just in case. I get caught up. I'm not too far away. Just in case. Wanted to live my life. Wanted to hide from people. So when I got married the second time, this is my second marriage. So when I got married the second time, I'm like, man, God, is you going to bless me with a child? Am I worthy? Did I mess up too much? God, God, talk to me. Please talk to me. I know my legacy got to live on, but did I, did I mess that up? But then God said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you found a good thing. He said, you, you, found, you found a good thing. See, the, the same shovel they used to bury you is the shovel they're going to use to plant something. That same shovel. So when I was being buried by people, God said, let, let, me, let me borrow that shovel for a minute. Let me borrow that shovel for a minute. And he took that. He planted something for the right time. For the right time. So I want to let everyone know, I'm, I'm soon to be through, that a bad wind is better. 
Don't look at the circumstances. Don't, don't worry about what people putting on Instagram and Facebook. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. A bad win is better than a good loss. Because the Bible even said they soon shall be cut off. They soon. Soon. You ain't going to wait for it. But make sure that you're in a winning situation. Because when the game is all over, when the game is done, when God, when God say, okay, it's over for you, what then will he say? What then? You've been, you've been being good this whole time, but then you lose at the end. Whether I'd rather look bad now. Listen, you could talk about where I live. You could talk about my clothes. You could talk about all these things. But at the end, I win because when I get to heaven, I want him to say, well done. My good and my faithful servant. My good and faithful servant. So that was my assignment to encourage somebody that you're winning. You're winning. You're winning. No matter what the judge say, you're winning. You're winning. Always have, always have that coach on your team that always encourage you. Every team I was on, the head coach always got on you. But then the assistant coach would be over there and say, you know, you know coach tripping, right? You go, go get back out there. You're going to do better next time. So I want to encourage everybody, young, old, it doesn't matter. You winning. You winning. So if there's one that want to give their life to the Lord, this is your time, this is your opportunity. Come on the winning side. Come on the winning side. I know you don't know how to figure it out, but God already worked it out. Come on the winning side. And I'll give it over to the pastor at this time. Thank you. God bless you. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a great big hand praise. Ain't no need of worrying what the night is going to bring. Mm, it'll be all over in the morning. It'll be over in the morning. Morning. Ooh, it'll be all over in the morning. I want everyone standing, those that can and those that will. doors of the church are now open. If you want to come and give your life to Christ, you want this to be your church home, you want to be saved, if you want prayer, you can come at this time. And while you're standing, I want you to, they can come, they can come. If they want to come, they can come. While I'm speaking, they can come. Let's give God praise for those that are coming. Do me a favor, I want everybody to grab somebody by the hand. The ones that are coming up, you can still come. The ones that are coming to get on board, that want to be saved, they can still come. Everyone else, I want you to grab somebody by the hand. Grab somebody by the hand. We can give God praise as they make their way. We can clap for them as they make their way and then grab the hand back again. So, like, let it go, clap. Grab back, oh, clap, right? Come on, they still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. but just Jesus. Put nothing in your mind but just Jesus. If you want to see a miracle, just look at the hand that you're holding. If you 
going to feel a miracle. You're, you're feeling a miracle right now. Person that you're by, you have no idea what, what they may be going through, and you have no idea where God is getting ready to take them. But I want you to squeeze that hand in the name of Jesus. And do me a favor, just begin to speak over the life of the hand that you're holding. They say, Pastor, I don't know them like that. Well, just say, God, do it for me. Come on, begin to speak over that, speak over that person. My young fellas in the back, I need y'all to grab each other's hand. Begin to pray for one another. The enemy wants to destroy you. But what the devil has meant for our bad, even now, that hand that you're holding, it's getting ready to turn around for their good. Come on, come on, squeeze that hand. Let that person hear you pray over them. Let that person hear you speak blessings over their life. Let that person hear you. You've been silent for too long, but this is the day that, that you get your joy back. This is the day you get your strength back. This is the day you get your hope renewed. This is the day. This is the set time. This is the appointed time. Let them hear you speak over their lives. Something is being birthed even right now by what you're declaring over their lives. Something that has been laid dormant for years is getting ready to be stirred up. And if you don't mind, I dare you to begin to clap your hands for the person next to you. Tell them this, this clap ain't for me, but I'm giving God praise for what he's getting ready to do for you. I need you to tell him. You got to look at him and talk to him. You got to open your mouth and say, say, I'm praising God not for what I needed to do for me, but I'm, but I'm praising God for what he's getting ready to do for you. Tell him I'm not praising God for the doors that he getting ready to open for me. Some of y'all ain't doing nothing, but I'm praising God for the doors that he getting ready to open for you. Shake him like you're mad at him and say, why are you trying to figure it out? God done already worked it out. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Why are you trying to figure it out? Tell him God done already worked that thing out. If you believe it's been worked out even now, open your mouth and give God praise in this place. All the bad stuff mixed together. God is turning it into something beautiful. Did you hear what I said? I said, God is turning it into something beautiful. Now do me a favor. Now just hug that person. Just hug them. Just hug them. While you hugging them, say, I thank God for you. I... Tell them, I thank God for the gift that he placed on the inside of you. And I know this is a youth service, but... Somebody's joy, somebody's strength is being renewed like the eagles. Even in your season years, you ought to give God praise and say, he's restored my youth back. What the enemy stole, what the canker worm ate up, I'm getting it all back. Come on, look at somebody and say, I'm getting ready to get it all back. Say, I'm getting ready to get it all back. Tell them I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. But I need about 500 of y'all to praise God in advance, in the midst of your storm. So this is what I'm going to do. Trey Jr., I want you to come get the oil, and I want you to... to anoint him in the name of Jesus. He's going to put some blessed oil on your hands. Just as he puts it on your hand, just rub it. Listen to me carefully. It's going to get, it's going to get warm in your hand. It's going to get warm in your hand. Just rub it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
there's somebody watching live and you said, man, I, I'm not there, but, but man, I want to be, I want to be saved. I want to be made whole. And you here, you, you may be saved already, but I want you to just repeat after me. Everyone that's rubbing their hands together, uh, you can say it as well. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, forgive me for all of my sin. Cleanse me from any unrighteousness. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you are not already saved, you just got saved. You at home watching, if you prayed that prayer of faith, you just got saved. Y'all, can we give God praise? Can we give God praise? So right where you are, you can stay seated. I just want you to lift your hands up toward heaven way. Just lift your hands up. Lift both your hands up. All of you out there, I want you to stretch your hands toward these on the front row. You at home watching, we want you to be with us, but we thank God for you. We thank God for you. I want you to stretch your hand towards the screen. Put nothing in your mind but just Jesus. All my prayer warriors, just as you're pointed in, put nothing in your mind but just Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for your sons and your daughters that came, Father God, and you know what they need. You know the struggles that they may have. But we thank you for your grace and your hand of mercy. And Lord, as we touch your sons and daughters, we ask that you stir up the gift in them right now in the name of Jesus. Let your power flow from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. We thank you for the many lives that they're going to touch. We thank you for making their crooked roads straight. We thank you for being a redeemer. We thank you for long life and peace. We thank you for strength on every landing side. And Lord God, we give their gifts back to you. Father God, stir it up right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for, by way of our youth pastor, what the devil meant for our bad. Even now, you're turning it around for our good. We thank you for pouring into us. We're empty cups and we're before a full fountain. Thank you for pouring into us. Thank you for giving us our hope back, our joy back, our strength back. Thank you for saving our youth. Thank you for blessing us like never before. Get the glory out of all of our lives. If you believe that, shout, it is so. And so it is. In Jesus' name, amen. I dare somebody to give God praise. Y'all can take it back. Y'all can take it back.